Thanks for coming down this afternoon. As per usual, everyone waited till the last day. Uh, welcome. Thanks for coming down. I've got about four or five relatively short things to talk about today. Some updates that we do each year, some new things we'll talk about, and then a few things on safety culture. So I'm going to dive right in here. First, I want to show you a video that is only funny because nobody got hurt. It's really more about awareness and what we tend to do over time and see what you think. How many of you have ever done that? <laughs> Hopefully uh, nobody, but it kind of goes back to the premise of, you know, we, we do things every day, we do our jobs every day, uh, sometimes repetitively, and we kind of forget to look around at the surroundings. So um, a lot of what I do uh, in terms of safety is try to impress upon people the, the value of being present and uh, helping others as well as yourself do things safely, and just taking a couple extra seconds to uh, step back and think about it before you do something. Um, so we'll get back to that in a few minutes, but I want to talk about a few things that we need to go through. Uh, each year we go through our drug-free workforce policy and our EAP. Uh, I want to talk about our recently updated active shooter protocols and procedures. Uh, talk a little bit about packages of mail in the, in the, uh, in the building here. I'll talk about storms uh, and procedures in the summer that we have, and then some slip and trip reminders. We'll talk just briefly about the building uh, and security updates, and then a few things on uh, safety culture. Um, the drug-free workforce policy, uh, we've gone through this before, a lot of you know this. Uh, some of you that are newer may not have heard this as much. Uh, the background of requirements, what circumstances might re result in you having to take a test or we ask you to take a test, um, what the process is initially, and then if it's a confirmatory test that's required, what are your options after that test is done, and then our EAP. We'll talk about that a little bit too. Uh, just as a refresher, the FCC, the Drug-Free Workforce Policy, basically just says we don't want anyone under the influence while they're working, um, or hopefully else, elsewhere either. But um, while working, the sale, use, possession, distribution of illegal drugs, improper use of legal drugs on company property, and again, company property can be anywhere we do business. Um, it could be on a, an off-site location. It could be in the building. Um, essentially, we, we want to require everyone, and we require everyone to perform their jobs without being under the influence. Uh, and violation of the policy can result in uh, end, of term, end of employment. So it's an important policy. I want to make sure that everyone understands it. So what different scenarios could result in being asked to take or uh, submit to a test? Um, most often, if it's deemed that someone might be under the influence, we call that reasonable suspicion. Uh, if someone's violated the drug-free workforce policy, they caused injury to themselves or others, uh, property damage, if they're operating heavy equipment, um, that kind of thing, um, there might be a, a need to uh, submit to a test. How that process plays out is if it's determined testing might be needed, we need to have two people agree to it. Uh, two company representatives must agree to that and then talk about uh, the potential for a test. Once that happens, we get our office involved, um, our HR director, and we actually provide you with a copy again of the drug-free workforce policy. Um, the reason for doing that is to make sure you understand what's happening, what we're going to be doing. And refusing a test is always an option. You're never going to be forced to take a test, of course. Um, refusing would result in a positive confirmation and would result in future employment being um, at risk. Uh, however, if you do go through the process and it is a positive test, uh, the first time we would actually um, refer you to our EAP through the village. Um, and you could also choose to refuse that also and that would result in end of employment, um, which you have an option to do. Uh, the second, a positive test would result in termination of an employer right away. So um, that's kind of how the flow chart of how that works, so you understand that. Um, with the EAP, it's not just the drug free workforce policy. I talk about this all the time because it's such a good program that we have. Uh, we pay for this for every employee to use it, whether you do or not, uh, through the Village Family Service Center. They offer not only drug and alcohol counseling, but family counseling. Uh, legal referrals, uh, they do financial courses, they've done home buying classes. They do a lot of great things for, uh, for us. Um, and again, we don't know who uses it. We basically pay a bill for the number of employees we have every year and whether you take it or not. It does cover yourself, it does cover 
anyone in your household. So make sure you take advantage of that. We've got information upstairs and throughout the building if you've got questions on that. Any questions on that so far? Okay. Um, the active shooter procedures we talked about, we went through a training and a, a drill this last summer. Uh, we have this in our written program. I'm going to send out just a relink to our Google safety site that has all of our written programs on it. If you ever have any questions on that, again, it follows the run-hide um, fight methodology out of the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, there is a new training. If you haven't done it already, it's in the Aurora Safety um, Training Queue. Um, it'll go through that um, in a little bit different way, um, just to reiterate that, po that policy and how we do that. Um, we do utilize the emergency notification system. Uh, you have the option, again, to opt into that if you haven't done so already. Check out a sentence on the main page. It's under red. There's some red printing there you'll see. Click to sign on or to log on to the ENS system. You can put your cell phone, home phone, email, um, as, as many contacts as it'll hold. Um, the system is designed to send you, can send a voicemail, an email, and text messaging um, to that. And we do use that, and we would use it in this, in this situation. So if that ever happens, uh, we'd really like to be able to contact as many as possible. So make sure you sign up for that. Um, as far as mail and suspicious packages, uh, we've had some incidents of this nationally recently. Um, this has been in our program for quite a while, but just a reminder, um, really there's no way we can keep something from necessarily coming in our building. Uh, we've got a lot of different ways things are delivered to us, um, relying on FedEx, UPS, mail service, that kind of thing. But what we can do is use your discretion and make sure that you are aware and, and don't take, um, if you're thinking something doesn't look right, don't ignore that. Uh, usually if your instincts are there, they're usually correct. Um, follow those, um, let someone know, talk it through, call 911 if you think it's warranted because at the end of the day we'd rather have someone overreact than underreact. Um, we've never had an issue with this, but we want to make sure that we're just uh, vigilant to the point where we just, we're aware that it could happen someday. So we want to make sure we take care of that. And again, we'll, use, we'll likely use the ENS if we're aware of something like that. So another reason why you want to make sure you get signed up for that. Um, the ENS, again, I mentioned the sign-up options. We're never going to use that uh, except for an emergency. So uh, severe weather might be an option if we want to keep people away from the building or in the building, um, as well as uh, any other kind of emergency with you know, active shooter or violence, that kind of thing. So um, make sure you check that out and let me know if you have any questions. Pretty easy to sign up. Um, reminder on storm procedures for uh, spring and summer. We did move our meeting area down one floor last summer. We did a drill. Uh, make sure, if you're not familiar, you can always go out and check this out in our written program, but it's written here, how to get down to the basement. Um, there are, uh, as a main way through the uh, production area, if you're already working in that area, you're almost right there. Um, on the second floor, there is a uh, west staircase, and also on the, for the third, fourth, and fifth floor is a mezzanine, the south stairwell. If you wrap around the corner right behind there, there's actually a half door you can pop open and, and uh, go down to the basement. Um, the only thing I would recommend, if you get down there, make sure you push all the way in there. There's lots of room down there. We don't want to have people clogging the, uh, the stairwell. So, The last thing I want to talk about is slip and trip reminders. This time of year is honestly our worst time for slip and trips. Uh, they cause some fairly catastro catastrophic injuries. So I want to make sure with the freeze and thaw cycle that we're taking care of that. If you ever have an issue or a problem, let Steve Miller know. Let myself know. We'll take care of it right away, whether it's an ice issue or a building issue. Uh, if you see something that needs to be fixed, and you can, uh, a rug that's sitting there stuck up, fix it. Um, if you can, that would be really great. We really appreciate that. The last thing we want to do is uh, get somebody hurt before the end of uh, spring here. Um, oh, there's one more. Uh, ladder safety. Uh, the federal requirements are actually pushing more towards slip, trip, and falls, and ladder safety is part of that. Not everyone uses one. Uh, a lot of that's in production. But if you do, even a step stool, that kind of thing, you want to make sure you follow the directions on those. Uh, make sure you've got solid shoes. Make sure you're never putting your weight on the outside of the, of the uh, ladder runs. That's going to take away your balance and ability to stay on that ladder. Uh, with an A-frame ladder, typically the top step or top two steps are not supposed to be stepped on. Make sure you take a look at that. With an extension ladder, make sure it always extends three feet above the surface you're climbing. Um, the biggest thing to remember with ladders is the three-point contact. Uh, using one hand or two feet or one foot and two hands always on the ladder. Um, never carry something if, unless you can keep your contact with the ladder. 
Um, just some really tips on that, whether it's in the office or in production. Um, you have seen some emails from me. Over the next couple of months, we're actually updating our key card access system. Um, that's just become a, a system that's been annotated, so we're going to have to update that with a, a new system that'll have more information on the cards. The cards will be a little thinner, but the same size. Um, most of you got your pictures taken today. If you haven't yet, um, there's one more session, I think, uh, tonight, actually, to get that done. I appreciate you guys doing that. Um, over the next month or two, there'll be some days where we'll have some uh, transition from the old system to do, so I will appreciate your patience on that. Once we get that taken care of, that key card system is designed to get people in the building. Once you're inside the building, of course, we have keys for offices and that kind of thing. We're going to be rekeying the offices as well uh, to make sure that we're all up to date. So, more to come on that. The last thing I want to talk about is a safety culture. Uh, what is it? Why do we need it? Uh, like any other discussion with culture, um, it really helps um, us if we are able to talk about it, if we're able to talk to others about something they might not be doing safely. If you take an extra second or two to stop and then reflect and think about what you're doing before you do it, um, to try and uh, make sure that we don't put ourselves in danger. This little video here does a good job of talking about the uh, leadership roles we all play in that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Good afternoon. Feels like evening. Eh? Good afternoon, ladies and gents. Uh, my name is Ivor. My name is Jeff. Uh, we are a company called Fifth Dimension, and we are delighted to be with you this afternoon. Yes, a real pleasure to be standing here, and I am standing in case any of you were wondering. <laughs> slightly shorter than average yes. magician. So as I said, we're a company called Fifth Dimension, and we've been asked to uh, talk uh, about a different perspective on safety. Uh, we like to uh, talk about safety leadership uh, in particular, uh, but we don't use PowerPoint. That's the only slide you'll get from us today. Uh, but we do have a different way of presenting. Uh, in fact, it's probably easier for you to show rather than me talk about it. I thought you would never ask. Right, go for it. Let me show you what Ivor's talking about using the medium of ropes. Three different ropes to be specific, a small piece of rope, a medium-sized piece of rope, and a large piece of rope. I'm just going to get some of these ropes checked. If you'd be kind enough to check the large piece of rope for me, sir. I'll give you the medium-sized piece of rope. I'll give you the small piece. Don't worry about the size. It means nothing. <laughs> if you have a piece of rope, just give them a good stretch. Make sure you're quite happy. There are no magnets, no stud fasteners. The ropes don't stretch or shrink. It's normal ropes, the sort you find in any bedroom in Aberdeen. <laughs> Obviously, I'm thinking pajama cords or curtain pulls, in case you are wondering. Quite happy with the ropes? Well, thank you very much indeed. We have a small, we have a medium, and lastly, the large. You shared it. That's lovely. There we go. <laughs> Now, talking about safety, there are three main areas in safety. The first one is leadership, as demonstrated by the small piece of rope. The medium-sized one is all about systems, good safety systems and procedures. And the last one is about safety culture. It's important we have a good, strong culture at the heart of us and the organizations that we work with. So leadership, systems, and culture, all three equally important areas, although it looks as if one is more important than the other two. I'm going to demonstrate they're all equally important by taking the safety leadership up to the top, the safety systems comes up to the top. As the safety culture comes up to the top, I've now proved these three areas are equally important because now all three ropes are the same size. Thank you. No, they're not buying that. No, you're not impressed. No. <laughs> I can tell what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, hang on, magic boy, the ends are the same. We'll give you that. The middles are still different, which is technically correct. Until you take the middles and just split them in half round about there, give a little stretch, you do end up with one, two, or three ropes all the same size, whether in fact it's the safety leadership, the safety systems, or for that matter, the safety culture. And the last audience were so shocked, stunned, and amazed, they forgot to clap too at this oh, yeah. point. Oh. Oh, thank you very much indeed. Wow. What an audience. Yeah, they're good. they're good. This is a nice audience. Whiskey warms people up. Fantastic. Now, some of you are maybe sitting there thinking, hang on, what on earth does ropes and magic have to do with safety? Well, if that's you and you're sitting there and you're not too sure, uh, just exactly where this is going. As we go through, you'll understand a lot more. By the time we get to the end of our very short session, we'll have a much greater understanding. In the meantime, any questions? <laughs> no, how? Well, very simply and quite well, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. So, as you can see, we like to present in a different way. Sometimes we'll uh, do something that you sit and watch. Sometimes we do something that has one or two of you involved. And sometimes uh, we do something that has everybody involved. Because let's face it, when it comes to safety, whether that's in the workplace, uh, with our friends or with our family, uh, it's everybody's responsibility. Everybody should be involved. And so we're going to do something that involves everybody in the room. Uh, and I'm going to do, ask you to do something that's going to stretch you both mentally and physically. 
But don't worry, if you can stand up, that's as physical as it gets. So can I ask everybody to stand up for me, please? Excellent. Now this is very simple. I'm going to give you a, a simple set of instructions. Uh, Jeff and I will do the, the same exercise with you. And if you follow along and start at the same point, as we work through, we should end up at the same point as well. So this is very simple. Hold your hands in front of you like so. You will need to put your whiskey down. Yeah. <laughs> Apologies. And now roll your hands into a fist. And then push your thumbs out like so. Now turn your hands this way. Hey, it's a thumbs up for safety. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel the love in the room, Jeff. Yes. I'm not sure if it's love or fear. <laughs> now, this may confuse because we are a mirror image, but if you take your right arm and cross it under your left like so. Yep, that's your right under your left. Yeah. Well changed. A few changes going on, yes. And now turn your hands outwards like so. And now Gangnam style. <laughs> no, no. Oh. That, that moment has passed. <laughs> and now turn your hands down so your thumbs point towards the floor. <laughs> And then bring your hands together and clasp them so your hands are now twisted around each other and locked in position. Yeah, and that's your joints that are cracking, but don't worry, it's completely normal, and we have a full medic on standby. Now push your little fingers out. I'll turn sideways so you get the idea. And your thumbs down, okay? Uh, and those middle fingers, I'll just step forward to point out. But these middle fingers, I know it's difficult, but they've got to be as tight as possible, just leaving the little fingers and the thumbs out. Please okay? hurry. Oh, sorry. Now, <laughs> wiggle your little fingers and your thumbs, and your fingers, and your thumbs. And then on the count of three, do exactly the same as Jeff and I. One, two, three, just turn your hands over like so. What? No, no. just us. Yeah, you were doing so well up until that point. I'll tell you what, unlock your hands and please take a seat for me. Please take a seat. But that, that looks impossible. It looks as though there's no way you should be able to get from that locked and twisted position into that open position just by turning your hands over. And yet Jeff and I managed to do that, and there's a good reason for that. Yep, we cheat. Yes, we cheat. I mean, no, 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 no. It's simply we know how to do it. And it's like anything else. When you're looking at goals, objectives, targets, when you're looking at new ways of working, perhaps even new ways of thinking, it can seem as though this is, if not impossible, certainly going to be very difficult. But with the right training and learning, with the right... Uh, knowledge and support with the right behaviors, attitudes, leadership, systems, and culture that Jeff mentioned. Things that might seem difficult or even impossible suddenly open up and become possible for you. And that's the type of thing that we like to explore in the little sessions uh, that we talk about. There's a business guru in America uh, called Peter Drucker. Sadly, no longer living. He died about nine, ten years ago. And he came up with a phrase which we love as magicians. And hopefully you've worked out we're magicians that specialize in safety rather than just really weird presenters. Uh, he came up with the phrase, the best way to predict the future is to create it. And I love that phrase when it comes to safety. In other words, if I'm standing in the present here, and if this is the future over here, instead of just crossing my fingers that I achieve that safe future, or hoping I achieve that safe future, Peter Drucker says the best way to predict the future is to create it. So we thought we would take you on a little journey with us using the tools of our trade. I will stand over here in the future with our special creation, and meanwhile, I'll leave you with Ivor in the present. And the tools of our trade, of course, being magicians, uh, happens to be a deck of cards. Uh, these are slightly larger than normal, uh, just so that people can see them a little bit easier. But all 75 cards are present and correct, as you would expect in a deck. But obviously, what Peter Drucker is talking about in terms of uh, that creating that future is about having the right procedures and systems in place, as Jeff said. And then it's about the decisions we make within that framework, uh, you know, on a day-by-day -day basis, or sometimes on a minute-by-minute -minute basis the situation that we're in. So we're going to recreate that by getting some of you to make some decisions for us, to help us work towards the future that Jeff has. And we'll review those decisions as we go through the process so that we're actually absolutely sure that it's what we want to do. And I'll just give them a little shovel. And then, uh, Jeff, would you choose someone to start us off? Gentlemen, right at the very end of the first row. You can stay there. Don't worry, you don't need to come up. So, I'm going to deal some cards down at the table like so. Now, this is not a numbers game, so you don't have to be counting them. Uh, all you have to do is when you've got a gut feeling and you think there are enough cards on the table, I just want you to say stop, okay? Stop, stop there, perfect. Excellent. Good Excellent. decision. Excellent. Choose someone. Uh, gentleman sitting uh, right back, you've got something red on your top. Yeah, you. Yes. What's sir. your name, sir? 
Nice to meet you, Alistair. Alistair, in about five minutes, you may look back on this situation and think, well, what would have happened if there had been more cards on the table? And the last thing we want in any given situation, particularly where safety is concerned, is that what if or if only scenario. So you and you alone get to make this decision, possibly changing the future. Do you want me to add any more cards? And if so, how many? Yes. <laughs> that was step one. <laughs> step two, the number. 20. Thank you. Thank you. We only have 18 minutes. You know? <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Thank Good. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very Excellent. Much. So we now have 20 plus something cars. Uh, Jeff, one Someone more. Someone else. Um, lady right in the very front row here. Yeah. Your name, madam? Ioana. Correct. Ioana. <laughs> <laughs> In about an hour, you may well think back and think, well, hold on a minute. What would have happened if there had been less cards mm -hmm. on the table? So again, to avoid that what-if scenario and possibly change the future, do you want me to take any cards back? And if so, how many? Don't say 21. <laughs> I'm struggling, but I'm going for five. Five? Five. Okay, perfect. Good One, decision. two, three, four, five. Perfect. So we've ended up with an indeterminate amount of cards on the table. Now, we're going to eliminate some of these cards as well. And again, I'm not going to deal these out uh, because, as I said, numbers are not important. Uh, so I'm just kind of randomly splitting them into two different bundles. Uh, Jeff, can I get someone to choose one for Yes, me? lady, second end on the first row there as well. Your name, madam? Linda. Nice to meet you, Linda. Linda, from my perspective, I have a right hand and a left hand bundle. Which one would you like me to take, the right or the left? The left, OK, I'll just drag it towards me so I don't forget which one you mentioned. Uh, and we want to just review this one last time. You, sir. Sir, tomorrow morning, you may well waken up in a cold sweat. You're going to wipe your brow as you turn over in bed and think, what would have happened if he had taken the other bundle? So again, you and you alone get to make this final decision, possibly changing the future. Are you happy with the decision made, or do you want me to take the other one? You want me to take this one? OK, I shall take this one away. Perfect. Now, uh, we've been left with a bundle on the table, which I'll come to. Uh, the cards here that, were, that have been asked, I've been asked to take away, obviously all different. The top one is the eight of diamonds. But we've been left with a bundle on the table, and I want to kind of recap before we approach that, because some cards were dealt onto the table, some were added, some were taken away. A bundle was chosen for me to take away, and at the very last minute, that could have been changed, but it wasn't, just leaving this uh, pile of cards here, the top one of which is the Queen of Hearts. And obviously, if you look underneath, all the other cards are different as well. So by working together, by reviewing those decisions, by moving towards the future, we've ended it. Why are you looking like that? The sorry, the what? The Queen of Hearts. <laughs> Can I say, sometimes even with the best laid plans, think things don't exactly work out the way that you expected them to do. I have the king of clubs, he says. <laughs> uh, but thinking of my feet, it is a picture card. And the odds of getting two picture cards are odds of about 12 and 52, which is one in four odds, which isn't bad. One in four odds isn't bad. We're talking about safety. We're talking about people's lives, perhaps. And you're talking about one in four odds. Well, I mean, no. I mean, you've got to plan for the unexpected because that does happen. You've got to plan for change and manage that change. You've got to have a contingency plan. Well, you must always have a backup plan. Otherwise, you just end up where you end up. Peter Drucker said, from a safety point of view, the best way to predict the future is to create it. The future we've created just happens to be this one here, the Queen of Hearts. Please give everyone a nice round of applause that helped with that experiment. I just got away with that. Well, it was pretty just close. So from a safety point of view, it's basically, it's not just all about the mind. We have to take our thoughts and then to step forward with these to make sure we have that safe future. We'd like to finish with one last experiment involving this, a little circle. What I'd like you to do, ladies and gents, is to focus on the very heart of this circle just right down here. This is not hypnotic. You won't go into a trance <laughs> or anything like that. But I want you to concentrate on the black dot right in the middle of the circle. So keep your eyes focused on the black dot. I will count from 10 down to zero. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Keep focused on the black dot in the middle. And now, look at my head.
I have to say, at my height, I probably shouldn't be doing this experiment, no, no. to be quite honest. <laughs> um, let, let's try and look at, well, let's try and do this again. Focus again right on the circle right in the very middle. Oops. There we go. Focus on the circle. Whoa. There we go. This bit has just come undone like so. Just tighten that nut. So focus on the black circle. <laughs> it's going slowly. Keep focus on the black circle right in the middle. And again, I'm going to count down from 10 to 0. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And now look at my head. <laughs> again. <laughs> Quite interesting, um, and interesting how we are looking at exactly the same thing, but see two completely different res results. Um, very often, safety is used as an excuse, particularly in the United Kingdom. We've heard many different things of conquer seasons being banned at schools because of safety reasons, or hash browns being banned from school canteens because one of the corners might be too sharp for the children to be able to chew on. <laughs> and there's a lot of nonsense that's happened with regards to safety. Um, but safety is important, and we have to carry it at the very heart of us. The theme of today's presentations has all been, it's in the mind. It's all in the mind. And safety definitely is very much in the mind. It's what we choose to think about it. Like this last experiment, we can choose to look at safety and look at uh, everything that's involved with it and just see it as negative and soul destroying and basically locking everyone up in cages and taking away free choice. Or we can look at it in a slightly different way. We can see that over the many years as we've started to practice safer within our organizations, within our households, that we've actually seen accidents and injuries beginning to shrink. At the same time, we've seen health and safety and people's welfare expanding. So it really is how you look at it. But again, thinking slightly differently, nothing shrunk there, nothing grew. It was all in the mind. And when you think about it, safety, as Jeff said, does begin in the mind, but it begins with us, with each of us, as an individual thought. And that safety leadership that we talked about at the beginning is everybody's responsibility. Uh, leadership uh, to us is not a position, it's a behavior. And those behaviors begin uh, with those thoughts in our mind and then our actions uh, or inactions, depending uh, on how we see things. Uh, and therefore, if we want safe futures for ourselves, for our families, uh, for our colleagues, we need to take uh, a positive step forward uh, and do things within ourselves that will then impact on everybody else around us. Yep. Each one of us is responsible. Each one of us is capable to create that safe future that Peter Drucker alluded to. Ladies and gentlemen, he's been Jeff, I've been Ivor, we are Fifth Dimension. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so you can kind of see how uh, behaviorally wise we can uh, really control safety and, and help to uh, create a safer work environment. So just a nice way to, to think about that. If you have any questions um, from a safety standpoint in our facility, our safety committee is listed right there. Please reach out to one of us, we'd be happy to help you. Um, is there any questions I want to cover today? Okay, I appreciate your time. Make sure you sign in if you did. Have a good day.